Last week, alhamdulillah, we talked about uh, the Jews and their response to the Prophet sallallahu and the companions. Allah says, وَمِنْهُمْ أَمِّيُّونَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا أَمَانِيَّ وَإِنْهُمْ إِلَّا ظُنُّونَ فَوَيْلُوا لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بَأَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا فَوَيْلُوا لَهُمْ مِمَّا كَتَبَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَوَيْلُوا لَهُمْ مِمَّا يَكْسِبُونَ So we talk about this last uh, week, alhamdulillah. So today we'll move on to the next ayah, which is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَقَالُوا لَن تَمَسَّنَ النَّارُ إِلَّا أَيَّامًا مَعْجُودًا So a series of lies, you get it, of the Jews are mentioned by the Quran, and this is one of them. Get it? They say, لَن تَمَسَّنَ النَّارُ إِلَّا أَيَّامًا مَعْجُودًا They claim that they're the best, and this is the norm in the case of these people, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them. They said this, they, they are the chosen one. So here they say, لَن تَمَسَّنَ النَّارُ إِلَّا أَيَّامًا مَعْجُودًا They said, hell will never affect us except for a few days. But it's good, they accept that they are going to hell, right? <laughs> At the first place. <laughs> That's why Ibn Kathir says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about the Jew here, when they talk about themselves, that they will be going to hell. But then they lie also. The first one is correct. You get it? Because whoever goes against the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he will go to hell. Among the Jew and the Christ, uh, the Jews and the Christian, whoever hears about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but unfortunately he did not listen and follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take him to hell. So this part of the, the mention is correct. Get it? They know that. But their statement, Ayyama Ma'aduda, except few days. This one is false, is a lie. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Attakhadtum inda Allahi ahdan, falan yukhlif Allahu ahda. Is there any agreement between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concerning that matter that you will be going to hell for a few days? And if this is the case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never, I mean, stay away from his promise. Allah will never change that which he promised. So did you have any agreement between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is what will be happening? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never go against his promise. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to, uh, I mean, is trying to tell us here is that this is nothing but a lie. That's why he asked them the following question. Is there anything between you and him concerning that matter? Which Allah will never go against it? Am taquluna ala Allahi ma la ta'alamun Or you are just attributing a lie and I mean creating a lie and attributing it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala As usual. So one of the two things, either they have a contract between them and Allah that they will be going to hell for a few days or there is nothing between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but that statement is one of their lies against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they will be taken to hell for a few days. وَرَوَى الْحَافِذُ أَبُو بَكْرِ بْنُ مَرْدُوِيَ عَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رضي الله عنه قال لما فتحت خيبر لما فتحت خيبر أهديت لرسول الله لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم شاة فيها سم أبو هريرة said and by the way he converted to Islam during that time he says when Khaybar was defeated, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he managed to conquer the place. Uhdiyatli Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, shatun fiha sum. A sheep was given to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which has poisoned it. Poisonous, uh, poisonous uh, meat was given to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by one of the sisters there. Some said her name is Zainab. Okay. Allah. But the point is, one of them. She gave the poison to the Prophet وسلم, and she asked which part of a sheep the Prophet وسلم, liked the most. They told her, Al Dira, original Amami, the front leg. The Prophet وسلم, really likes it so much, he likes it so much. And this shows that the Prophet ﷺ is not mutakallif, it's 
a very normal person. He doesn't exaggerate in life. He lives like anybody else. So he eats meat, he eats goods. Okay? So that uh, system which is adopted by some Muslims, you get, they call it zuhud. They don't eat good. They don't wear good. They don't live in a good way. And they have all the opportunity, but they don't do. This is not zuhud. This is rahbana that was invented by the Christian and they also they couldn't manage it properly. So it is not for us. Who is the leader of Zuhad? Rasulullah. And he wasn't like that. No matter how much your Zuhd reach, you will never reach Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he wasn't like that. That's why the best thing to be used in reminding ourselves concerning this matter is the statement of Ibn Al-Qayyim. But before then, Imam Ash-Shawkani in his tafsir says, one of the causes of balada to the brain is to eat wrong food, the food that is not fresh, in which the zuhud of the people of today is based on. You know balada? Balada means uh, dumbness, a person to be so dumb. It causes this to the brain, the brain will not be smart. Yeah. And that's why Allah creates food, right? And he asks you to take the fresh one. One of the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a sunnah jibiliya, not the sunnah ta'budiya, one of the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is based on his personal cultural practice when it comes to the food. And you know who is guiding them to make that selection? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He has the best of method when it comes to foods. Ibn Al-Qayyim says, Prophet never kept food so that it will be warm tomorrow for him to eat it. Doesn't do that. Eat fresh things. Take what he can finish it, finish it, tomorrow look for a new one. SubhanAllah, that's very good life, you know? Because if you're going to keep it and then tomorrow you warm it and then eat it, you're going to kill the, a lot of things that benefit you. It's not haram to go for that, but Prophet is teaching you the best method. You know, do not take that which is more than your capacity. MashaAllah, if you want to see the application of this, go to our canteens, right? Go to the, see, look at the tables, you see, MashaAllah. A lot of food being kept for the cats. Alhamdulillah, if we give it to the cats, but we do it, we put it in what place? Garbage area. And I'm telling you, this one, you're going to be questioned about that in the hereafter, you know? Because this is a risk, this is food. And people in UI have no excuse. Get it? Because you are the one who serve yourself. I guess you should know your stomach better than the one who is giving you the food. No, some people one third is <laughs> six thirds of. <laughs> I heard somebody was, I don't know whether it's true or not, but the boy was blamed for, eat, for eating chapati. You know, you know chapati, right? Of course I know you know that. So for eating chapati. <laughs> Chapati, he ate four. And the, the, the Sheikh was telling him, what's wrong with you? You <laughs> eat four? He said, no, my father eat eight, mashallah. <laughs> so he inherited from the parent, right? <laughs> so anyway, this, we're going to be responsible in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not, is not like that. He ate, he took that which he can eat. So, the Shokani says, Allah says, Kulu min ma razaqnaakum, you should eat from the fresh one. You get it? Don't take the harsh one. Allah says fresh, and He created it for, he created it for who? For you. He said, Kul hiya lilladheena amanu fil hayatid dunya khalisatan yawm al qiyamah. He said, I have created these blessings for the believers. So if you are not going to eat, you are leaving it to who? To others. So Prophet is not like that. He eats good food. If I claim that I'm Zahid, I should do my Zuhud like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's Zuhud. But the Prophet doesn't do Takalluf. Takalluf means exaggerate. Trying to, I mean, fight to make sure that he get the best. No, Prophet doesn't do that. Whatever comes to him, he deal with that. If good comes, this is what he has. He eat it. If the one that is not fresh and could be eaten comes, that's the extent of his risk. Today, he eat that. 
But the prophet is not, is not the person that will get the good one and then he will say no. doesn't do that. Ibn Al-Qayyim says, Az-Zuhd, this is the best definition of Zuhd. He says, Az-Zuhd, Tarku ma la yanfa'u fil akhirah. We always mention this. This is supposed to be memorized actually by each and every one of us. Az-Zuhd, Tarku ma la yanfa'u fil akhirah. Az-Zuhd is to leave that which doesn't benefit your akhirah. That's Zuhd. So it applies in everything, right? Whatsoever has no benefit to your akhirah, you should leave it. That's Zuhd. Do you get an idea? Does food benefit your akhira? Yes. Some people, if they don't eat, they cannot focus. Almost everyone is like that. Get it? Money benefits your akhira if you don't use it in the wrong way. So it means you have to monitor your activities. Whatever doesn't benefit your akhira, you stay away from it. So indirectly, we are telling you that if something harms your akhira, you have to stay away from it. And this is wara. They call this one wara. Al wara Whatsoever harms you, Akhira, if you leave it, you are warrior. Not in the way the common people are translating Zuhud and Wara. These are this the interpretation of Zuhud and Wara. Zuhud Tarkumala Yanfa'u fil Akhira, Wal Wara'u Tarkumala Yadurru bil Akhira. Which one is stronger? Zuhud. Get it? Because Zuhud is to leave that which doesn't benefit. Even if it doesn't harm, but it doesn't benefit. Stay away from it, that's Zuhud. Al-Wara'u, you stay away from something which harms your Akhirah. To get an idea, so if I observe Zuhd, I'm going to observe also Wara indirectly. But it is not necessary that when I observe Wara, I'm observing also Zuhd. May Allah grant us good. So the Prophet ﷺ was given the sheep and there is poison in it. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ Please listen to this uh, that you know who is the Jew. No? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them, The Prophet sallallahu asked the companions to go and bring every Jew that is around the place. They brought them. فَقَالَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مَنْ أَبُوكُمْ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them, Who is your father? I mean, do you need to think about this? He's, he tell them, who is your father? Qalu fulan. He said, so and so and so person. Fakala Rasulullah kathabtu. He said, you are lying. Bal abukum fulan. He said, your father is so and so. Fakalu sadaqt. They said, you are right. <laughs> Subhanallah. And even at this moment, your father, they lie also. And they know he's the prophet, you know. He said, Sadaqt wa barat, and you're so kind. Thumma qala lahum, you know, that should be enough, right? Thumma qala lahum, hal antum sadiqiyya an shayin in sa'altukum anhu? And he said, you guys, are you going to speak the truth if I ask you again? Qalu na'am. He said, yes. <laughs> These guys, they have, no, they have no shyness, I'm telling you. Qalu na'am. They said, yes. Faqala abul qasim. Qalu na'am, ya abul qasim. They said, yes, ya abul qasim. إن كذبنا عرفت كذبنا كما عرفت في كما عرفت في أبينا. If we lie again, you're gonna know just like the way you know that we are lying when we talk about our father. You're gonna know it also. So don't worry. We will tell you the truth this time around. فقال لهم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من أهل النار. Who is going to go to hell? فقالوا نكون فيها يسيرا. We're gonna be in hell for a while. <laughs> you can see the mentality, right? A person knows he is going to hell and he accepts to go to hell, you know? <laughs> but unfortunately, he wants somebody to come with him. You know? So, ثم تخلفون فيها. And then you guys are going to replace us. Talk about yourself, but then talk about your others, right? So they said, you guys are going to replace us. فَقَالَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ إِخْسَأُوا the Prophet said you should get lost, keep quiet. Wallahi la nakhlufukum fiha abada. Wallahi we will never replace you in that place. You know there are some hadiths that says those Muslims who are going to paradise and those one who are criminal, Allah SWT will give every one of the Muslim who is going to paradise one of those people to take him to hell as a replacement, as, as somebody who will occupy his place if he 
engage in a disobedience. So we will never replace them in that place. They will go inside because of their disobedience and they will remain there. لا نخلفكم فيها أبدا ثم قال لهم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هل أنتم صادقي عن شيء إن سألتكم عنه so that's the second, second lie right they promise not to lie and they lie again that's why the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said you guys are you going to speak the truth if I ask you because you lied in the first time and the second time also I have already took your words and you lie again so the third time the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم asked them are you going to speak the truth قالوا نعم يا أبا القاسم and then he told them, "Hal jaltum fi hadhi shati summan? Did you put poison in this in this uh, sheep?" فقالوا نعم. They said yes. فقال فما حملكم على ذلك? Why did you do that? فقالوا أردنا إن كنت كاذبا نستريح منك. We're just trying to test you. If you're a liar, we know you will get affected. You will die. But if you're not a liar, nothing will happen to you. That's the reason why we did that. So, one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ate it. Unfortunately, he ate it, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ate a bit. That man died. That companion died. After about a year, he suffers first, and then he died. Some scholars said that woman was not killed by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He forgot. Uh, he forgave her. But some said no, she was killed when that person died. The Prophet ﷺ brought her and applied the qisas on her. But at the first time when he did not die, the Prophet ﷺ allowed the case. But when he died, she was brought also to justice. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ killed her in the way she killed him. But the Prophet ﷺ, he doesn't get affected by that except a bit. And he kept on pinching him. Get it? He said, I kept on feel, having the feeling of that meat I ate from that sheep. So until the last minute, that's why during the last moment of the Prophet Sallallahu he said, he talked about this, he said it kept on coming. So it looks like according to some scholars, that was the cause of his death. The illness was because of that one. Get it? That's why Ibn Qayyim says, so that Allah Subhanahu will combine for him all kinds of virtues. SubhanAllah. Wali of Allah, Nabi of Allah, Rasul of Allah. And uh, what else? Ulul Azim. The only thing that left is Shahada. And he has the Shahada at the end. SubhanAllah. There's no virtue which is not to be found in the Prophet. So this is the hadith that supported that statement of the ayah that says, They say, That's where Allah SWT revealed this one. قال الله تبارك وتعالى بلى من كسب سيئة وحاطت به خطيئته فأولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أولئك أصحاب الجنة هم فيها خالدون الله سبحانه وتعالى says no it is not just I mean the issue is not in the way you say it whoever does an evil deed and uh, he engaged in this evil deed in the way he is surrounded by his evil attitude without repentance. Allah says, these will be taken to hell and they will dwell in that place forever. So it means this is an opportunity for you, the Jews, to repent and to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or else you'll be going to hell and no replacement. You're going to stay there forever, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ And those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and put their faith into practice and action, these are the ones who will be taken to paradise and they will also remain in paradise. You get it? So this is the ayah that carries a great lesson to us also, not only to them. Because uh, a person is not supposed to belittle a sin. The Jew, they belittle sins. They don't mind going to hell. A Muslim is not supposed to have this attitude of manner. We should be aware of our activities and monitor, of, uh, monitor our activities and make sure that whatever we do is within the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحَقَّرَةِ الذُّنُبِ وَإِنَّهُنَّ يَجْتَمِعْنَ عَلَى الرَّجُلِ حَتَّى يُهْلِكَنَّهِ He says, I warn you from those sins that you belittle those one that you call insignificant 
because they're going to be combined in the place and gather themselves in the place and they will become huge in the way they will destroy that person. Al-Qatru minhu tadafuqul khiljan. So that's which you belittle might be the reason why a person will go to hell. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna rajula la yatakallamu bil kalimati min ridwani, min ridwani la. La yuqi laha baala. A person will be speaking a word that earns him the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which he doesn't even pay attention to it. But it will be the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates him in ranking. He will succeed because of that word. And the same goes to the person who said a word that he doesn't pay attention to it, and it will be the reason why he will go to hell. Get it? So we have to monitor our activities. And as I always mention, that a good Muslim is somebody who says, sins are sins. Allah don't like, uh, doesn't like them, I will stay away from them. Don't you ever deceive yourself that this is minor, this is major. Yes, it is true, this is the Aqeel of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. We, ha we have two types of sins, minor and the major. But it shouldn't belittle the minor sins and say these are just minor sins. I heard somebody who was saying that, come on, even the Lamam, also is you, you guys are preventing us from doing. You know Lamam, right? Lamam, these are the minor sins. Somebody was saying that even the Lamam, this when, when another person advised him, please don't look at the opposite gender. He said, even this one? Yeah. What's wrong with that? Even this one? And they get the Mufti also that gave them the fatwa that says actually the prohibition from the Quran is on the, the person who looks with his heart. What do you think about that? <laughs> I heard this fatwa like that. Somebody says that looking, the, the one that is prohibited is when you look with your heart. But looking with the eyes is okay. Looking with the heart is... So I don't know how does that work. We have to get that mufti to teach us how to... <laughs> <laughs> so may Allah want to make us righteous. وَإِذَا أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهَ وَبِالْوَالْدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ ثُمَّ تَوَلَّيْتُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِنْكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he talks about the Bani Israel again يُذَكِّرُهُمْ بِمَا أَمَرَهُمْ بِهِ مِنَ الْأَوَامِرِ So these are the commands that were given to Bani Israel. So the same were given to us, you know. When it comes to Sharia, it's not that much difference between us and them. Get it? Generally, the Sharia to Allah is the same. There are differences that happen to do, uh, do with the nature of uh, every nation, but it's not that much. You can see all of these commands given to them, we are also given by Allah SWT the same command. So Allah is reminding them about what they're supposed to be doing. Get it? And He took a covenant between Him and them. The promise that they will be busy doing this, not what they were found to be doing. And unfortunately, after having all of this agreement between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they turn against it. They never fulfill their words. So Allah says, وَإِذَا خَذْنَا مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ لَا تَعْبُدُنَا إِلَّا اللَّهِ the first command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Allah ya'budu illallah They shouldn't worship anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And this is the command given to every nation from Adam alayhi salam until the last one to be born before the day of judgment That's the command Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messengers and the first and the most important message to be conveyed to others is Tawheed because it is a root and is a principle, it is a principle in which if you take it off, the building will collapse. You know, you have how many pillars for Islam? In Islam? Okay, five, right? Okay, good, you remember five. So, which one is the greatest one? Shahada to Allah, ilaha illallah, right? So, it's like you have a building, you have a roof. Okay, you have Shahada to Allah, ilaha illallah in the middle. It can hold the, the building, you know? It holds it. But you know, we need support also from the sides. Get it? So we have five daily prayers, we have zakah, we have saum, we have 
what is the last one? Hajj. Then go and say, I forgot Hajj. So we have Hajj. So the, the Shahada is in the middle. And you have around, surrounding this Shahada, these are the other pillars. What are they doing? They're supporting the Shahada to hold the building. If I cut off the prayer, most of the scholars said Islam is still there as long as somebody believes in it. If he doesn't believe in it, then the Shahada is affected. The Shahada also will collapse. Then the building will go down. But if he believes in it, most of the scholars said Islam is still there, but it is very weak. So if somebody leaves the prayer, the building will be weakened by that attitude. It will be very weak actually. You get it? Weaker than the situation of a person who leaves the fasting or zakah or hajj. So the same goes to a person who doesn't practice anything in Islam except shahadatain. Seeing them and believing in tawhid, does it. But he doesn't practice the righteous deed. His Islam will be shaky. Very shaky. He will be in a very dangerous situation. But once you destroy the shahada, everything is going to be gone. Prayers will not benefit. Fasting will not benefit. Get it? And as such, I will advise my brothers and sisters who are engaged in da'wah, do not give a non-Muslim who is willing to accept Islam chance to go and practice the religion first. Then he comes back. That's wrong approach. You know? That's what we do. We tell them sometimes, go and try first to see whether you can do it or not. <laughs> This is your religion or religion of Allah. And then, okay, you have some of them for two years, they have been in the masajid praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he die during the, the probation, you know, those people who work, you have the probation. <laughs> yeah, during that time, where does he go? Hell. So you cheated him. You have to try your best to convince him. If he doesn't want to get convinced, then let him take his own right to do whatever he wants. But you should try your best. Do not tell him, go and try first. Because he might die at that moment. Yeah, last one to guide us in truth. So, la ilaha illallah is the first. And la ilaha illallah is the last. Okay, do remember this. Huh? La ilaha illallah is the first. And la ilaha illallah is the last word. That a person is supposed to live this life with. Or else he would definitely fail. And my brothers and sisters, we have to be really serious on this matter. You shouldn't say that, okay, that's simple. La ilaha illallah, I can say it as much as I wish. No, it doesn't work when it comes to death, you know. The only person who will be successful in saying la ilaha illallah during death is somebody who practiced la ilaha illallah before death. If you're not among the community who are practicing la ilaha illallah, it will be very difficult for you to pronounce it. So we have to be very careful about this. Huh? The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that it has to be sidqam min qalbi. And nobody will succeed in this except somebody who is amongst the party of la ilaha illallah before the time of death. Otherwise the truth is going to be revealed at the last minute. And this is the saying of Ibn Rajab when he says, وَفِي الْجُمْلَةِ الْخَوَاتِيمُ مِرَةِ السَّوَابِقِ He said generally what happened during death is that the conclusion of a person is going to be reflect it's going to be a reflection of his past you know the past reflects during the last part of the life of a person so try as much as you can to make your heart clean get it make a good relationship with the last matter otherwise during death a last matter is going to deal with you according to that which is inside which you never show anyone right but the last matter today he will let them see and that's the reason why the Prophet ﷺ said some people during the last minutes of their life, everyone thought they're righteous, but then they will complete their life in their life in, in a bad way. And they will be taken to hell. <coughs> why? Because their activities are excellent according to that which they show others. But between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something else. You can cheat somebody. I can cheat somebody. They can cheat somebody. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اِعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ فَحْذَرُوا You should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that which is in your heart. Get it? You can hide anything, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. We cannot see, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. That's why He said, be very careful. He knows that which is in your heart. فَحْذَرُوا You should be very careful. So to hate is the first and is the last. Get it? Not like what some people are saying, you have to be in a state of doubt, you have to do this and that. No, all of these things leave them aside. 
No prophet ever invited people to this. They invited them to La ilaha illallah. Get it? And the manifestation of La ilaha illallah should take place in your life. What does La ilaha illallah mean? To be a good Muslim. You know, La ilaha illallah means nothing except to practice those rituals that Allah Subhanahu wants you to do and to stay away from, from the evil. Get it? To be a good Muslim. Islam means a total submission to the will of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. قَالَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَبِالْوَالِدِينَ إِحْسَانًا The second command is to be kind and to be good to the parent. Get it? وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدِينَ إِحْسَانًا It is enough for you to know that the right of the parent is so great that Allah SWT connected the right of the parent to his right. And my brothers and sisters, this is also a serious matter. Get it? You have to make sure that your parents are happy with you in every single moment. And as a Muslim, you cannot go against your parents, you know. Even if they ask you to go against your dunya, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do, him, do it for, them, uh, for, their, for their sake. You cannot say no to them. You can talk looking for your right in a nice way. But you cannot make them angry. If you say, they say, you keep quiet. You try, you push, they push, keep quiet. The next day, Talk to them again. If they say we don't want, keep quiet. Like that. Slowly, 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 until the time they laugh and say, okay, khalas, just go and take. To get an idea. But you cannot fight them. Get it? In this member, we talk about the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where that man uh, uh, came to him and he said, Ya Rasulullah, inna abi yajtahu mali. My father is snatching my, my wealth. Get it? He says, and he knows that I have family. And the father is taking everything. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, Okay, done. He says, Anta wa maluka li abik. He says, If you are done, you and your wealth belongs to your father. Subhanallah. How many people are married in this place? Sorry, I like to expose those. Hamza? Only of one? La ilaha illallah. Okay, she. <laughs> Okay, Safwan is new, I cannot ask him, get it? But those people who have children, I'm telling you, you will remember. Sometimes when you see your wife, you remember your parents. Get it? You remember your parent. You see how she suffers carrying the child, and uh, also when the child comes, you see how you sleep and your wife cannot sleep because the baby doesn't want to sleep. She lives with him like that for a few years. Allah, you remember how your parents are suffering. You get it? You remember how your parents are suffering. That's one of the benefits of marriage. It reminds you about the right of your parents also at the same time. So parents are not supposed to be disobeyed unless if they ask you to go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this case, فَلَا سَمْعَ وَلَا A parent, when they ask you to go against the religion of Allah, you don't shout at them, you don't fight them. Get it? You don't curse, you don't do anything, but you tell them, no, you stay away from it. Get it? This is beyond their right. They have no right to ask you to stop doing something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to do. They have right to stop you from doing the mustahabbat, but they have no right to stop you from. And you look at this righteous person, very righteous. Not only righteous, but one of the awliya of Allah. When his mother made dua against him, what happened to him? The dua reached him. Juraj, he got in trouble because of that. These are mothers. And that's why also you as a parent, you have to be very careful. Because if you make dua against your child, most likely Allah SWT is going to accept it. So if Allah SWT accepts it, you'll be the first person to suffer. You know. So as a father, you should control your emotion. As a mother, you should control your emotion. The best is to always ask Allah to guide your child. No matter how much evil and how much bad he is. Ask Allah SWT to guide him and to fix him. Do not make dua against. This is not the attitude of a parent. The attitude of a parent is to have hope in the children and to uh, do anything possible to make sure they are fixed. Khalas. So make sure that you always check your relationship with the parents. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Read Allah fi read al-walidain." The pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa taala lies in the pleasure of the parent. You know. 
to make your life easy to understand this topic the prophet sallallahu told you the pleasure of allah lies in the pleasure of your parent which means if they are not happy with you allah is not going to be happy with you but when we say that you shouldn't misunderstand because sometimes some parents they are not happy with the child because he's following the religion of allah they are not happy with the child because the child is following the correct way this unhappiness from the parent is useless it will never affect the child do you get an idea we're talking about normal circumstance when the father wants you to stop doing something which is just dunya is not religious thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it obligatory upon you you are supposed to stay away from from it you get it and the best one to be to be kind to him is the mother more than the father why Allah did not mention except the the fact of the physical suffering to get an idea physical suffering who went through it the mother not the father get it for nine months one year or even more than that sometimes get it uh, who is suffering she suffers so that's why the right of the mother is emphasized more than the father and also add to the fact that if you are talking about the the weakest one in terms of extracting his right is the mother usually the children get scared of the father but they say whatever they want with the mother do you get an idea the father gets his right even by force smack the boy and get it by force mothers usually know get it so that's why the emphasis is on them right but this one you should be aware of the fact that we are talking about contradictions not like when the father said Hamza okay sorry Hamza come and then Hamza is almost one Hamza not this one Hamza is almost going to reach his mother but uh, I'm sorry who is that the first one to call you father okay the father called he's almost going to reach the father and then the mother says Hamza Hamza made a u-turn the father says where are you going you tell him no mom has called and the Prophet said Ummuk Ummuk <laughs> <laughs> so, so after you reach her, you have to call your friends to look for another accommodation. <laughs> no, you don't do that. Get it? If the father calls you first, you go to him. Finish his job first and then come back to her. If she calls you first, you go to her. But if both of them called you at the same time, you go to the mother. Unless if you, go, if you know you're going to be in trouble. Then you tell her, Mom, I know your right is bigger. But this man is going to put me into try. So <laughs> I will deal with him and then come back to you, inshallah. She will understand me in light time. I give you one secret. If you want a last wanted to make your life easy, almost make your, uh, always make your parents happy. This has been tried and it worked a lot. Get it? You find yourself in a state of difficulty, depression. Make sure that one of the righteous deeds you do after the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do something to the parent to make them happy. Be in light ta'ala, you will never remain with it. Inshallah. Inshallah. Qala wal yatama and also to take care of the orphans. Who who is who is the yatim? Yatim is somebody who lost the father or lost the mother? How about the one who lost the mother? Yatim? <laughs> so does that mean the mother is useless? <laughs> Actually, she's more important than the father, right? To the child. Because if you're going to give him a choice, the child will go to the mother, will not choose the father. But since the father is the backbone of the family in terms of protection and financial aid. So that's why when the, uh, the family lost the father, then that child who is below the age of maturity will become yetim. In human kinds. Do you get an idea? In animals, who is yetim? The one who lost the mother. Because for sure the father is useless. Get it? <laughs> but they says in the human beings, a team is the one who lost the father. Not because the mother is useless, but because the father is the one who usually, according to the norm, and the cultural practice, who supports the family financially and also as a source of protection to make sure that harm doesn't reach the family. So a team is among those weak uh, elements in the society that Sharia really want uh, what you call the community to pay attention on them. So if you are to help them, to support them, 
you get to show kindness to them, to show mercy to them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will appreciate it uh, for you. And Allah, we have a lot, we have a lot, we have a lot, I'm telling you any. You don't, you don't know, unless if you get inside a society, sometimes you cry when you see some of the situations. Uh, the father died, leaving the widow with children and no support. And sometimes these people, if the fear of Allah and Tarbiyah is not there, if she couldn't find somebody to support, she would end up selling her honor and dignity to get something for the children. And that's the benefit of zakah and the waqf and all of these things. Allah. That's the benefit of zakah and all of this. That's why you're supposed to go and do field research. Get it? You will get a lot of people. Allah, you get a lot of people who, are, who deserve that money and who are in need. And they have been suffering. And this money is theirs actually. It's not yours. Because the money belongs to Allah. You are nothing but an agent by Allah's wanted to take the money and go and put it in that place where he wants. You can't do anything. And wallah, I always take this righteousness if you do that. And you don't know. Allah SWT might ease your affairs throughout your life because of one person that you put happiness in his heart. To see those aitam being happy because today they have something to eat. You know, how, much, how, much time, how many times we eat in a day? Sometimes more than three times. Wallahi, you know, I'm telling you, wallahi, there are families when they wake up, they don't know what to eat. The entire family, they don't know what to eat. We have heard about some of them, they will go to the neighbors looking for a simple, small amount of, I mean, grain of rice so that the mother can feed the children. So what do you think if you can go and put happiness in the heart of those masaki? You think Allah SWT is going to neglect it? Wallahi no. That's why the Prophet said, Ana wa kafil We're going to be me and the one who takes care of a yatim just like this. I mean, you know, it's like you'll be next to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam going to paradise. And he says, the one who takes care of Al-Armala. Armala is the woman, the widow, who lost the husband. How many we have in this world? A lot, a lot. And in some, especially this time around when, this, when the injustice is everywhere. You know, the time of the companionship of the Prophet Sallallahu is hardly to see a woman losing her husband and at the same time she doesn't find somebody coming to marry her. They don't stay like that. They have somebody to take care of them. And you have in some communities, if a woman get divorced or she lost the husband, most likely until death she will never find somebody to marry her. We have all of these things against the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who takes care of these kind of sisters, he says it's just like somebody who is participating in jihad or somebody who is making the Qiyam al I mean, huge amount of righteous deed and reward Allah SWT has given this person. Leave the reward in the hereafter. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَن نَفَّسَ عَن مُسْلِمٍ قُرْبَةً مِن قُرَبِ الدُّنْيَا نَفَّسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قُرْبَةً مِن قُرَبِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ If you are to remove the worry in the heart of a believer in this life and the pressure, you get it? And the need in the heart of a believer, Allah SWT is going to deal with you in that way in the hereafter. In some hadiths, the Prophet Sallallahu said, in, in this life, Allah SWT will give you the same thing. Brothers and sisters, you will never get lost. And you will never be neglected by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And you will never... I mean, lack a support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as long as you're supporting others. Try this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will remember my word, Wallahi. The more you give, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. The more you, restra you restrain yourself, you become so stingy, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is dealing with you like that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Aisha, he said, لا تُعِي فَيُعِي اللَّهُ عَلَيْكِ وَلَا تُحْسِي فَيُحْسِي اللَّهُ عَلَيْكِ SubhanAllah. Don't close the bag in a way nobody can get benefit. Then Allah SWT will close also his risk from reaching you. You know, we're losing when we don't give. That's why somebody was right when he says, empty your pocket. But I, was, I will fix it. I said, be moderate. Don't empty your pocket completely. So that you can make space for other money to come. Do you get an idea? He says, وَلَا تُحْسِي And don't always do hisab. Yeah, I give you this, I give you last time I give you this, last time I give you that. If you do this, Allah SWT will also tell you, last time I give you this and I will no, never give again. How do you survive? 
So you don't do that with humankind, then Allah SWT will give you an abundance with no calculation. Very important hadith to teach us how to support the community and to check and see who is in need and help that person. And remember my brothers and sisters, today this person is like this, Wallahi, there is no guarantee that tomorrow you will not be in the same situation. And if you can grant him support, you also, Allah SWT will grant you support the time you need. The Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah says, if you remember me, if you remember me during the time of prosperity, I'm going to remember you during this time of hardship. It's part of remembering Allah SWT to remember those whom Allah SWT ask you to remember them. May Allah SWT grant us good and success in life. So he says, وَلِيَتَامَ عَلُ مَسَاكِينَ and the masakin. Masakin are the needy people, those people who have something but it is not sufficiently enough for them to support their family. وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna, And Allah SWT asked them to say good words. SubhanAllah. These are all values in Islam, you know. Allah commanded them but they neglected almost everything. Allah says, قُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna, And whenever you talk, talk in a good way. الْكَلِمَةُ الطَّيِّبَ الصَّدَقَةِ And you know, in the religion of Allah, if you say good words, Allah will write it as a charity for you, you know. SubhanAllah, very beautiful religion. Just say good word, don't say evil word. Allah SWT will write it as a charity for you. وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةِ That's why the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam said لَا تَحْقِرَنَّ مِنَ الْمَعْرُوفِ شَيْئًا Don't you ever belittle righteous deed. Get it? A good Muslim, a wise Muslim is somebody who doesn't belittle a righteous deed. لَا تَحْقِرَنَّ مِنَ الْمَعْرُوفِ شَيْئًا do not belittle a righteous deed. No matter how much small it is. He said, if you're rich, you cook meat, increase the, the soup, the water, make it more, and share with the neighbors. SubhanAllah. Very nice religion, right? Sometimes the neighbors, they smell, and they have slept with no food at home, and the guy, mashallah, we have this situation, you know, rich people, but surrounding them, you have extremely poor people, and they don't get that benefit from them. And you have sometimes in a house, a person is so rich, but his family, none of them knows anything. Others might benefit from him, but the family members, they don't get anything from him. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that this is wrong. He says, Ya Rasulullah, I have dinar. He said, feed it on yourself. He said, I have another one. He said, give it to your wife. I have another one, give it to your son. I have another one, Ya Rasulullah. He said, give it to your mate. He said, I have another one, Ya Rasulullah. He said, then give it to whomsoever you wish. We learn from this the priority, right? You start from yourself and then family members. Then if you have a balance, you take it to, to others. Because if I feed a family member, it is a charity and also silatu ar rahim But if I feed a stranger, this is just a charity. Which one is more rewardable? The first one, get it? And this is illogical actually to have your family member be in a state of need and you take the money and give it to, to others. Allah says, وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةُ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةُ And you have to establish the prayer and give the charity. Establishment of the prayer necessitates the observation of three things. Ikhlas, al mutabah and also praying on time. Ikhlas, and mutabah and praying on time. Ikhlas, you do sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is part of it to have khushu' in the prayer. What is khushu' in the prayer? Hudur al-qalb wa sukoon al-jawarih to have your heart being attentive and also your limbs don't move from here and there. To get an idea, you are very stable in your prayer, focusing in your prayer. This is what khushu is all about. I recall a statement of one of the neighbors. He was talking to his mother, just in the past. So he says, mom, how come I don't see the tree that used to be on top of the building of our neighbors? So the mother said, no, it wasn't a tree. This is so and so and so person because now he died. So he doesn't see him. You know, the way the boy is describing because he doesn't move. So he thought is the stick being fixed on top of the building. Nowadays, how much we move? La hawla illa billah. So khushu' is to have this, uh, I mean, attitude of being attentive in the prayer and you don't move here and there. The Prophet Sallallahu called movement, especially turning your head to look at the other side as a theft from shaitan. You call it ikhtilas. Shaitan, whenever you look, will snatch some part of your reward. 
So if you're not careful, you do it so much, you might end up that prayer with no reward at all. What is given to you is that you did what Allah wants to ask you to do. He will not hold you accountable of it, but there is no value to that prayer. So let's focus and maintain the khushu. It's a matter of training. Get it? So that's the first one, ikhlas. And the second one is al-mutaba. It means you do it like the Prophet If you pray in your own way, that's your prayer. And it will be rejected. You have to do it in the way the Prophet did it with khushu, with sukoon, with tuma'nina. Especially the tuma'nina. If you don't do the tuma'nina in your prayer, your prayer is batil. Wallahi, we have to be very serious. When you pray behind an imam, that is like rocket. You have to cut up your prayer. And sometimes if you can talk, talk to him during that prayer. Tell him, Imam, ittaqillah. Pray slowly. Khalas, rifkam bil qawarid. Tell him, relax, where are you going? Seriously, it's better to cut up that prayer and tell him, where are you going? Please, show mercy to our prayers. Khalad bin Rafi, when he came and prayed next to the Prophet the Prophet did not. And although he came and say assalam to the Prophet but that doesn't prevent the Prophet to tell him the truth. He said, go and pray again. He went and prayed again. He came back. The Prophet said, go back and pray again. You do not pray. SubhanAllah. The companion saw him praying, but the Prophet said, you do not pray. Three times it has been happening in the presence of the Prophet Then the man was so smart. He says, He said, Ya Rasulullah, I swear by the one who sent you with the truth. I cannot pray better than this. Please teach me how to pray. That's the job of who? Rasulullah. The Prophet said, sit down. When you stand up to pray, you make wudu in the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands, commands you. And then he taught him how to pray. And then he said at last, do this in all of your prayer. And he told him in one of the narrations, he says, فَإِنَّكَ إِمِّتَّ عَلَى هَذِهِ مِتَّ عَلَى غَيْرِ الْمِلَّةِ he says, if you are to die upon a prayer in the way you prayed, you will die upon something else but not Islam. Billah. But what did he miss in his prayer? The scholar said, Tumanina. He is pray praying very quick, very fast. Do we have an imma like that? Worse than that actually. Sometimes you'll be next to the masjid. Before you reach the masjid, they're done. Not only done, sometimes the imam already khalas reach hope. Wallah, it's very shameful sometimes when you come to the masjid and you think you're going to get the whole thing. When you come to the masjid, you see that there was a masjid that I got. Only the imam and the... What is the name of the one who calls the prayer? Muadzin. Only the imam and the muadzin got the prayer. Everyone is making up the prayer. It's like, what is this? And also sometimes we pray very quickly and we stay after the prayer. 15 minutes making long dua. Yeah, he cuts the part of that dua and add it to the prayer. You get it? Make the prayer look nicer because this is the requirement. And then keep some time for the dua. If you want to do it. May Allah want to guide us to the truth. So, praying like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And last one is to pray on, on time. Is to pray on, on time. Especially Isha time, do not pray after the midnight because your prayer will be batil. And Fajr time, make sure that the Fajr comes out before you pray. Get it? Especially the sisters, do not pray right when the time written in the cal calendar arrive, add at least 15 to 20 minutes and then pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This time around in Malaysia, I think the time is quite accurate. Yet at the time people pray, when you come out, you realize that yes, definitely you pray on time because the daylight will start to, to appear. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the truth. So he says, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةُ وَأَعْتُ الزَّكَاءُ And you should also participate in giving the charity. This is the obligatory uh, charity. Uh, and Allah SWT says, but unfortunately, most of you turn away from these commands of Allah SWT, regardless of their nature, but none of you was willing to observe them except a few. It is, so this is a message to them, a reminder to them, but it is a reminder to us first, because we have the same thing in our religion. Every single thing that Allah SWT mentioned here, we're supposed to do it first before them. You get it? So whenever Allah SWT addressed them, He is also addressing us. Unless if He said this is for them in the past. But these are not part of it. Because all of these things that we had mentioned, 
Allah SWT also commanded the believers to be doing. So I will stop here insha'Allah. Next week, if Allah SWT wish, we will come and continue. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashara la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubi